Okay, as I'm recording this video, I think this marks about three weeks since I watched the previous episodes of One Piece. Um, and the reason behind that is that, you know, my, I'm sure most of you know that my channel was down for a few weeks and, um, and so I was still watching One Piece during those weeks, but then once my channel came back up, I started to upload all my backlog. So I had a big break now, now that we're finally caught back up on the channel, um, I'm starting to re-record or start recording One Piece videos again. But uh, the disadvantage of that is it has been three weeks since I watched One Piece, and so uh, I'm I'm feeling like I'm out of the loop a little bit, which is sad because it feels like like One Piece is an episode that you know uh, is a show that like would benefit a lot from being binged or or watching in short succession, and yet that's that's not what I just did. <laughs> I just took a big break. Um, what I can remember is that we're in that sort of. Uh, I don't even know what to call it, that island, that village, um, and there's all the, there were basically just like assassins, not assassins, but bounty hunters, um, all, all fighting, and there was some cool Zoro moments and stuff, um, but what I do, there's one thing that I do remember, and the thing that I mainly remember is it ended with some pretty, like, I, I want to say complex, uh, law going on stuff that I sort of barely remember and I said at the end of the last video the sad thing is I'm not really gonna remember what's going on there um, but hopefully one piece will just you know keep me in the loop and I can figure out from context uh, at least the, the vague idea of what's going on I'm sure I'll be able to follow it I think we'll be fine so uh, yeah let's just get into this uh, episode this is gonna be episode 66 of One Piece if you want to get uh, the full-length reactions as well as early access which means you can get the next probably four episodes of One Piece you can go to my patreon account in the description below and check those out it's absolutely worth it being on my patreon and it helps me out so much so please go to do that anyway let's do this this is uh, episode 66 of One one Piece, here we go. Really, really stuck on you, Lola. Mr. Wife, Miss Valentine, not the cocoa. I kind of need this recap right now. Oh, don't look at that. Okay, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm caught up. I think I'm now equally confused as I was last time instead of being more confused, so that's good. So, Vivi and Igaram. Is he okay? <laughs> Nope. Oh, damn. That's a good way to. That was. That's to show a sort of change of character to break her head thing. That's kind of clever. <laughs> what, what is that thing that she, like. Puts her fingers in. Nice. <laughs> oh, I don't think he's gonna stand a chance. Oh! Don't flick that at him! Whoa! It's explosive? Can I do that? Why would we help? Okay, they have devil's fear powers. <laughs> okay. Okay. A reward? Maybe worth it. Yeah. <laughs> One billion berries? <laughs> A negotiation. <laughs> I love Nami. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> the confidence she had when she wasn't gonna be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> I forgot about this character. <laughs> Aw, they're all sticking together well. This, uh, the way they've set up this arc is really interesting and I, I want to talk about it after. Oh! These guys are strong. To make your entire body explode. Okay. Alright. That's interesting. Kilo Kilo. What's Kilo Kilo? You change. Oh, I was just about to say, you're able to change your weight? Yep. So she can change her weight without actually changing, like, the way she looks, you know? Not her mass. Oh, that's pretty scary. Oh my god. 10,000 kilograms? Those are pretty cool powers. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Mr. Bushido. <laughs> I'm saving you, girl. リソーコッカの建国。はい、アイデオネーション。ライト。リソーコッカでの約束されるのです。サウンド。フィシー、カインド。ミスターゼロ。ミスターゼロ。ミスターファイブから上の者たちの罪。アマジンミスターゼロウ
Damn, Luffy's angry. Tatsumaki? Oh, and it's a tornado. I guess I never realized that Tatsumaki in in uh, One Punch Man might mean something. And it might be a pun. I mean, you'd find most Japanese character names would mean something. Oh my god. Oh! Damn! Damn! <laughs> So are they are they just going for Luffy and Zoro? To, yeah, to prove themselves. <laughs> God damn! Not even a threat to him. Oh wow, that's where we're ending that one. I we I've seen this one right. I think I have because I'm I know this song, so I think I did see this last time. Okay, all right. So it took me uh, like a bit to get back into the the feel of what was going on and stuff. But now that I am, um, I'm actually liking this arc, uh, and I will tell you why. I think it's really interesting the way that they set that up. So I assume this this arc is going to be like an escort mission, right? They're gonna have to take Vivi um, from here all the way to Alabaster, wherever Alabaster is. Um, but the way they set it up, they didn't set, and I think this, this, like, saga, whatever you call these, like, the, the, um, the different, like, sections of the show, I think this one is called the Al Alabaster Arc, or the Alabaster whatever. Um, so, I imagine this entire, like, the escort mission is going to be until the end of that, this saga or this arc, maybe. Um, or they get to Alabaster and then something happens and then there's a... There's a uh, arc there, but I assume once they leave Alabaster after that, then the saga is—is is it called sagas? Because I know there's different. Um, there's there's a different name that people call them when they're uh, when they're the big like sections. Um, so uh, story arcs is that just what what we call them? No, oh I mean, yeah, Alabaster Saga. That's what it says on the uh, on the on the wiki page. So. Um, yeah, I think they're just called sagas. So, um, so yeah, I imagine that's happening, but I, the, it's back on topic. I, w I wanted to talk about the fact that the way they set this up was actually kind of cool because they set it up as like a, oh, we're coming to this town, um, right? And this town is full of bounty hunters. So it's us versus the bounty hunters. And that's how they set it up. But really that was just like a ploy what they did was they used that to get us used to the characters of these bounty hunters and then flipped them so they're, they're like, not the good guys, but they're, you know, people that, we ha that we're going to root for because there are bounty hunters who are higher up in their company that are, that are worse, you know? I think that's a really interesting way to do it because I, I totally didn't see it coming and you sort of come to know the characters in a different light, in a different way. Where these characters, I mean, they were they were ridiculous. The way that they the the episode of them fighting Zoro and stuff um, really shows that they they were kind of like uh, wacky kind of bounty hunters, you know. Um, and none of them were particularly like incredible, but um, but they they were entertaining enough and they had decent enough personalities. Um, but yeah, you know, you, we got an attachment to them in a different way than we normally would if they just introduced Vivi as like, oh, she's running away from people who are trying to get her, you know, like, uh, she's like helpless and running and there's a bodyguard and then the bodyguard dies and says, you know, you gotta do this. Like, then we'll just be like, okay, here's the damsel in distress, whatever. But we got so much more of Vivi initially because it was her and this dude who were like this team rocket duo and who were doing like all these wacky crimes and doing stuff um and then they were trying to kill the the straw hats and like there's just I think there's something so much more interesting about introducing the characters that way it's it's really really unique um so yeah I I think that's that's a good omen of things to come because it means that, like, I feel like the arcs are going to be set up in much more interesting ways now. I feel like that's a, such a clever way to set up an arc. 
Um, so yeah, and it's like, it's so sort of, uh, natural and smooth the way it transitions into a different feeling for the arc that I feel like a lot of people wouldn't even think about the fact that that's what they did, you know, like that's how they introduce them. It's, I, I think it's something that people would just be like watching along and then they wouldn't even realize that they were being manipulated to feel a certain way about these characters. It's so cool. I, as a, as a person who loves to write, like seeing writers be able to pull stuff off, uh, off like that is really impressive to me um i like mr five and mr Val miss valentine i think his name's mr five um they're, they're kind of like little cool they do feel like um yeah like what are they what do you would call them like commanders you know like they're, they're the top like under the boss type guys um in the way that they hold themselves and in their powers and stuff um i think it's i think it's really cool i have a question about the devil's fruit um and i don't know i don't know if it matters like I, I get worried when i ask questions because i don't know if i want to know the answer uh or or not i guess if it if you if you think that i probably shouldn't know the answer at this point then then don't tell me um if you think it like it's something that's either already been covered or it really doesn't matter if i know then you can tell me um but the um the devil's fruit is there only one of each fruit is every fruit unique because when i first started the series i imagined there were like you know let's say 50 devil's fruit in the world and there were like five gum gum fruits, five whatever fruits, five whatever fruits. I just imagined, like, I literally imagined like a garden and I imagined each bush had several of that fruit. Um, but we haven't seen a repeat yet. And there's a lot of unique devil's fruit. There's the gum gum fruit, there's the chop chop, there's the kilo kilo, kilo kilo, there's the boom boom or whatever the, the, body what one was there's a smooth smooth fruit or whatever the smoke the plume plume fruit um like there's there's so many that we've come across and we've never seen a repeat i imagined when we started the series that because there was a gum gum fruit i thought oh that means there are going to be other rubber people that we're going to come across you know because other people might have had the gum gum fruit but i think that's not the case i think that all the devil's fruit are unique which is cool and definitely I much, much prefer that because basically it's just a way for, um, for Oda to be like, well, the, this is this guy's power. He's got a unique power. You know, it's the same thing with everything, every, everything in existence. When most anime <laughs> that you come across, uh, most shonen battle anime that you come across will be, uh like you know they'll have some sort of power system but really what it comes down to is every person has their own unique thing there's just going to be a slight twist on it you know so for example uh demon slayer the twist is that uh all of them uh, are using different sword styles and so there's like different effects and stuff with the sword but that they're, all they're doing is swinging a sword basically and the demons all have their own blood art. So they control blood in certain ways and do stuff like that. Um, in Fire Force, everyone has uh, either, like their powers come down to either controlling fire or creating fire, depending on what generation you are. So it's the same thing. Everyone has their own unique power and you can see how the characters are using their unique power. Um, but when it comes down to it, it's it's the, the twist on it is the... Uh, is the the fact that it's different things of fire um in my hero obviously it's everyone's got their own quirk so they have their own unique powers except they're hereditary so they come mostly from your your parents and different combinations of quirks fused together in interesting ways there's a lot uh of shonen that do the same thing and so one piece i suppose like everyone has their own unique powers but they come from these fruit and if you have one of the fruit then the sea hates you and you can't swim there might be other uh, things to Devil's... I mean, I'm sure there's something else to Devil's Fruit that we don't know about because there's a thousand episodes of this show. So I, I imagine there's more to it than that. But I just... Uh, I had that question, and I also think it's just an interesting way to do uh, power sets. And I always just like looking at the different ways that Shonen's... Because I don't want Shonen's to change that way of things. Because I think it's, it's much more fun 
when everyone has their own unique things instead of, you know, if it was like, uh, like, I guess if it was like, uh, in Fire Force, I'm going back to Fire Force, if everyone just controlled fire, uh, or made fire, but they didn't do their own unique stuff with it necessarily. They just was, were fighting, literally fighting fire with fire. Um, then I don't think it, it would. I don't think the battles would be look as cool. I don't think each character would be as memorable. You know, um, yeah. And so, whatever. <laughs> Let's just get into the next episode. Um, so I think because I, I think that's all that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, I think that's basically it. Um, I, I am curious about who Mr. Zero is, though. Like, if he... It, like, I'm, I, I guess I can keep that theory up that maybe he is a she, just because they specifically called themselves Mr. Zero. But if you want to keep your identity secret as best you can, would you want a qualifier for your gender? I don't, I don't feel like you would. Like, I feel like you'd, you'd want to be either Zero, which just means you don't know my gender, um, or you lie about it to throw people off. So you say, I'm Mr. Zero and you're a woman. I don't know. Anyway, let's just get into this, ep uh, in this next episode. So let's uh, go to episode 67. Here we go. I'm really, really stuck on you. Ha, ha. Okay, is this a recap? I, I'm trying to figure out if this is a recap while I'm doing this. Oh, this is no, not a recap. They're, they're jumping right into where we left off. Oh my gosh, okay. I guess it doesn't want me to do a Rubik's Cube. I, 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 I enjoy that recap time sometimes. <laughs> the duck is sweating. Can duck sweat? Jeez. <laughs> These two are just typical men. What's with the out... It, that was weird. They were like, they were outlined slightly in white, like they were copy pasted onto the screen. What's going on? Oh, <laughs> Nami. <laughs> they sorted it all out. <laughs> No. Are they poor? Or do they not want her? I don't know. Oh, it's warring. Oh. They, this is a cool shot. What the heck? That wasn't like One Piece. I liked that. Yeah, I, I expected that. <laughs> I, I thought that much. What if we end the civil war? Will you give us a billion berries? Oh. The way the music is swelling is interesting. Crocodile, seven warlords of the sea. Wait, oh, is that the boss? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> A warlord, that's exciting! Oh my god! <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> That's so funny. 500,000 is something. Oh my gosh. <laughs> A thousand. Wait, this is your disguise? Your hair is the wrong color. Oh, 
<笑>ドメラレタカイゾクなのでケンショウはカツテカケラレテイタショウキングクワハセルモンベリーズオッケーこうくださいますかあまじらさないでいっ <laughs> Vivi is cute, but I think I'm. I think. I mean, she just looks like. Uh, I guess she looks like Kaya a bit. She looks like most of the other women in this show. <laughs> what? 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 Huh? Huh? What? Oh my god. Oh my god, that's terrifying. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the, the hug was adorable. That. What a crazy scene, and what the hell? Is this her? Wow, she has her own little screen! Oh my god, so she's gonna be like a temporary member for this arc of the squad. Oh. Hello? Who are you? <laughs> this is an incredible episode. This is so good. <laughs> I feel like that joke isn't funny, isn't as funny in other anime. There's something about Nami that makes it work. Oh my god. I thought it was Vivi talking. I wasn't even paying attention properly. Okay, who are you? Like, Miss... Can I even guess? Miss New Year's or something? <laughs> Miss 1am? Miss Midnight? Oh, Sunday? Oh... <laughs> I like this woman's design and her voice acting actually damn they're taking her seriously he's pointing at a woman <laughs> <laughs> what? She have telekinesis? <laughs> What's the power? Uh-huh. Little garden, okay. Why? <sighs> Nothing at all. I didn't even read it. Oh my god. Is it really gonna break it? Oh yes he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the captain, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> An ostrich. 
I want to gush about this episode. はあ reception of like this episode if it like stood out to anyone else as like a really good episode like it might be one of those things where in retrospect people were like oh yeah that actually that episode actually did set up a lot of stuff but you don't you don't think about it when you think of the top episodes you know um or other people might be like no i i mean th there was nothing special about this episode or it might be an episode that fans often like would when look at these episodes would often be like oh this one's a really good one i don't know i have no idea it's really hard to gauge i mean there are episodes that you watch of shows sometimes where as soon as you're finished you're like wow that was such a special episode that everyone's going to be talking about that you know um but I don't I didn't get that vibe from this episode but I just I I think this was such a well executed episode so I mean tell me please in the comments below um tell me you know did, did is this an episode that you guys particularly like you know like I'm sure a lot of you you know like every episode basically you know or like I I always like One Piece but th does this episode does it stand above other ones around it for you because I think I, I don't know. I just think, like, as a first-time viewer, this is such an exciting episode, just in general. So much of the stuff they set up here, the lore bits that they set up, the new, like, villains they set up, the, the new companion that they set up, the way they did everything. It's just, it's really great. I'll, I'll talk about some of the, the cool things. I mean, like, okay, so we find out Alabaster's got this civil war going on um and the civil war is was seemingly incited by baroque works because they were like manipulating people and they want to take over alabaster essentially make it their own um and then you know they can have their own people in the ranks do whatever um the leader is one of the seven warlords we've heard about the seven warlords before i think hawkeye was one of them Right? I know Hawkeye was part of like a major group. I think it was the seven warlords. I say a major group. I don't think the warlords are together, but rather they're just the seven people most recognized across the Grand Line or something. Um, but so we find out the crocodile is the leader of, um, of this whatever. We haven't met crocodile yet as far as I know. We haven't even seen them. Um, I'm saying them because I'm assuming they're a man, but they might not be. Um, but I feel like now that we've seen Miss All Sunday, um, it's actually probably more likely that, that Crocodile's a man because they do, you know, pair them up, kind of. And I think maybe they used he, him pronouns in this episode for Crocodile? I don't know. Um, but... But it's also Japanese, so they generally wouldn't use uh, gendered pronouns. But the subtitle is would, might not be able to avoid that or might not think it matters. I don't know. Um, regardless, uh, Crocodile is the leader. And so that's exciting as well because now they've got a warlord after them, which just sounds awesome. And I love that we don't know much about Crocodile yet because there's so much mystery there. And instead of introducing us to Crocodile, they instead introduce us to Miss All Sunday. I mean, I think that's a garbage name. <laughs> it's a really funny name. I, I don't, it doesn't sound the way I... The reason, like, okay, so... So, All Sunday, I think All, all Sunday is a thing, right? Like, there's... The, that's a reference to a type of Sunday. Uh... <laughs> no okay so apparently all sunday just means all the sundays 
<laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> That's, uh, I love this episode, and that's the stupidest thing that happened. <laughs> um, okay, so miss all Sunday, which means all the Sundays. The, the thing that I was thinking was that, um, in the same way that the men are named in such ways that they are, like, the closer they are to zero, um, the, uh, the more high-ranking they are. So that makes sense, right? So you... you you know, Mr. One would be the person, the man directly under Crocodile. Um, so, uh, so the Miss, I would assume, man, like the highest ranking female we've seen is Miss Valentine. All the other ones we've seen have been named after days, um, but there are only seven days. So the Miss Valentine, I assume, is like if zero is the start of the year then um valentine's day is is in february like that's pretty pretty early in the year like a miss christmas would be like a you know pathetic horrible fighter because they're really far from the start um and miss new year's eve might be even more garbage possibly but i assumed the leading woman would be like miss new year's or uh miss like, uh, the, I think I said Miss Midnight during the thing because it's like that's exactly when like the day flicks over, you know? So if you were doing like times, um, then that would be how you would do it. I didn't expect Miss All Sundays. Now I imagine it's because you're going by the idea that Sunday is the first day of the week. And so instead of being Miss Sunday, you're Miss All Sun all of the Sundays. <laughs> so it's stupid. It's a stupid naming, <laughs> naming convention. <laughs> But that character is awesome. The I don't we don't know what her power is yet, but we saw her use it. It seems to be some sort so, some some form of telekinesis, some form, some sort of telekinesis. Um, but not I I don't think it's exactly that. It seemed like if it was just telekinesis, one they would have said it, and two I don't I feel like uh, One Piece powers generally aren't like just this thing. Uh, like they're, they're not just telekinesis they're she controls something or she you know like she controls the wind or she does whatever so i i have no idea what it could be i yeah no i i, I don't know i wish i did but i don't um really sad that we lost uh igram he he was he was a cool guy i mean i didn't i didn't i wasn't in love with him you know but i uh but I think he was a cool guy, and what a powerful way to do that. That is a crazy scene. The one, just the explosion. I mean, the way they animated it and the color scheming of that of that scene is was awesome. Like, that was crazy. Because it was so, it felt so unlike One Piece. The One Piece that we've come to know so far, you know? Like, One Piece has had serious themes. Um, very serious themes, but I feel like a One Piece hasn't delivered a scene like that before. And that was really cool. The panic of this episode, like, that sets in of, like, we need to get out of here now because we are, like, in, in serious danger. They did that really, really well here. Um, and now they're going to a place called Little Garden. Uh, and then we saw a giant footprint, I guess, uh, at the end. So maybe it isn't so little. Maybe it's like, I was trying to think, because I was like, Little Garden sounds, you know, like cute and quaint and stuff. But maybe it's called Little Garden because it's like a forest, but the creatures that take up Little Garden are massive. So the garden, the forest, which is the garden in this case, looks little in comparison, maybe. Um, so, but apparently, you know, it's an extremely dangerous place, uh, but I loved that, I loved that she was like, hey, here's an eternal pose, this lets you skip Little Garden, because that's so dangerous, you're gonna die there, so you might as well take this, and Luffy walks up to her and goes, fuck that, I'm destroying that, you don't choose where we go, <laughs> I choose where we go, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. See, there's so much that I loved about this episode. I just wanted to gush and gush about it. This, oh man, I loved this. I loved this entire video. I I hope you guys can see how much I'm enjoying One Piece. So I hope that you can 
uh, continue to support the One Piece videos and, uh, and you know, because the more successful it is, the more time and energy I can put into it and maybe the more episodes I can fit in a video or, like, the more often I can post the videos, like, I don't know. Um, but regardless, I mean, please keep supporting these videos as best you can. Comment down below. That's a big way to do it. Um, and, uh, and like the video and stuff. Like, if you don't know what to comment, you can just comment, like, L I love this, these reactions, you know, or something like that. That, that, that simple thing can really help, I think. I do, I, I don't know exactly how the algorithm on YouTube works, but as far as I know, on every other social media platform, algorithms are based on engagement, and, and engagement can be comments and stuff as well, so... Thank you so much for watching these episodes with me. I had a fan-fucking-tastic time. Um, and I'm excited for the next episodes. I'm very, very excited. So please, if you are excited too, you can go to my Patreon account for full length and early access the next four episodes uh, on my Patreon right now. I am jealous that you guys get to go and watch them right away. Um, thank you very much, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.